welcome back and what we're going to do today in this video part two if you saw part one it's all great that's that's down there in the list uh, for you to go and uh, take a look at uh, which should be interesting uh, but part two shows you the guitar assembled this one's assembled and complete except for the little strap box which I just haven't put on yet everything's there everything seems to work well it would and uh, this one's been totally set up but we're going to run through all the things that I did in the order that I did them just so that you've got an idea of uh, yeah what you need to do to complete it yeah sounds like fun and it is fun it wasn't particularly that difficult to do but for some people they might even not bother to make a guitar because of this section now oh the setup oh my god what do I do well none of it's rocket science and I don't necessarily do things the way that some people suggest which some people on YouTube will say oh you haven't got a clue the only problem is this works <laughs> and it works brilliantly so let's go and uh, take a look at all the things you do in the order that I did them and uh, I'll be back presently sounds like a plan before we move on just so there's no confusion in case you didn't watch part one this guitar is going to be set up with a particular set of uh, strings they'll be only ball but they could be anything it's actually the gauges that are important and uh, these gauges were picked up from someone on the internet uh, who posted a, a video saying that he found that the secret to Hendrix <laughs> Well, he had. Well, he said he had. Uh, and he said that, ah, oh, it's the strings. It's the strings. They had such and such and such and such. You know. I did buy a set uh, from my local shop before they went out of business, if you want the truth. And um, we're fitting them on here, so there's no confusion when we get to looking at what's going on ahead. This is the sizes of the strings. It's a custom set. We've got nine. We've got 12, 14, 26, 32, and believe it or not, 38. So that's the custom string set that are going to go on it. Well, they are on here now, but you're going to see in a second, uh, you know, all the things I did when I'd strung it up, so to speak and uh, yeah remember that you might find it useful for you uh, especially if you like the tones that you're going to hear a bit later on in this video just an interesting thing just wanted to cover that let's go take a look at the uh, the setup now okay well here i am this is not rocket science remember it's all pretty simple stuff unless you don't know what you're doing like me <laughs> no i'm joking I haven't got a clue, but don't worry about that. You need a capo. I've got one of these types. But you can have any capo you want. And I've got some feeler gauges. Yeah, there they are. And what you want to look for in the feeler gauges is uh, something like... Uh, uh, let me find it. Yeah, an 8 or a 9. I'll opt for the 8. 8 thousandths of an inch. There it is. So let's take the capo and whap it on the neck, just behind the first fret, like that. And that's had a, an effect of pulling the strings down onto the neck, okay, or onto the first fret, very tightly, right there, you can see. Take a closer look, and you can see that it's pulled the strings right down, nice and simple. Now what I want you to do is is you really need to hold the strings down at the 12th fret too just like I am you can just about see that there you go you can just about see that and when you do that go about halfway down the frets let's imagine there and what you need to do is to check the gap under that string there because let's think about this for a second if they press down here and they press down here 
The only way you could have a gap under there is if this neck bends up like a banana. If you get me. Now if there's no gap when you're here, and you check this on all the strings by the way, you can go through all the strings and check it out. Mine are set to eight. I can tell you that now because I've already done this work. It's just that the video I recorded didn't come out right. So here I am starting fresh. So you want this to be up a bit like you want it bent a bit like that. I'm exaggerating, of course. You only need about eight thou on that fret there, or this fret here. And it should all be good. Now, if you haven't got eight thou, what you need to do is to adjust the truss rod until you probably either flat or you're like this on, on, the, on the neck. You need it to be just like, sort of like that. Not obviously this much. I'm exaggerating, as I said. When you've achieved this eight thou thing, it's all nice, that is. It's just perfect. And it, it, it's nice all the way across. When you've achieved that, well, then you've got the neck. I call it the rake, or the... Uh, they have another name for it. It doesn't really matter. But you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. So let's, let's assume that's been done now by you. What a great uh, move forward. That's your first uh, bit of aggravation out of the way. So now we can get rid of this. And we can take this thing off. We don't need that anymore either. Let's get rid of them. They're all uh, just an annoyance really. <laughs> so that's them gone. What's next? Well here I am further down on the body. And the next thing that I did was to adjust these pickup heights. So that when these are fully down, when this is pressed fully down. You've got gaps under here of X, Y or Z. Now one of the things about the Zex coil pickups uh, that I like to mention is that Zex coil pickups don't have the same pull on the strings that a normal uh, pickup would. You know, the ones with the, uh, with the magnets that you can see. So on these, it's, it's actually possible to get them very, very close to the, uh, to the strings themselves. And this little note I've got here, you can see it. I'm not going to ask you to read it, but <laughs> uh, they say here, uh, that's it, what do they say? They can be height adjusted very close to the strings without causing wolf tones or stratitis. Really? Stratitis? Uh, well, I've got mine like that, and you can basically see them, hopefully, from there. Maybe you can or maybe you can't, but that's what they set up to. I'd say that they're all about an eighth of an inch away, or maybe a little bit more on this one, of three sixteenths. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. That's the way I've got them. I like them, you might not, but that's the next thing you've got to do. It's a simple matter to adjust, just up and down on those uh, screws. How hard can this be? Oh man, it's simple. The next thing I did was to adjust the string heights. You can see, it's a very nice uh, action as they call it. And my string heights was 5 64ths and 3 64ths I think. Let me just have a look what did I set them to. Yeah, 5 64ths and 3 64ths. So I can show you that. If you look at this side, I tend to do it to, to about the 12th fret or so. It's about 5 64ths this side. And on the other side, just take my word for it, it's about there at 3 64ths. So I'm going to spend all day on that, except to say that you adjust it all right there. So you want the heights on these little screws up and down, whoops I'm playing it, <laughs> up and down until you get those heights across the, uh, the strings on your guitar. So when you look at the bridge, we're going to have another close look in a second, but when you look at the bridge you, you want this sort of concave sort of thing. So the middle ones are going to be higher than the edge ones, that's how I'd describe it. Pretty simple really. So getting a nice close up, you can see there's a sort of oval and you can see how far mine are lifted up actually from the uh, from the back plate 
I know, I know. It's the same picture, but the thing you want to really note is the actual tremolo itself. Can you see that it's parallel to the body? And this thing's tuned in. There it is. It's tuned in. And this is parallel. Now you can set your uh, tremolo up so it's hard on the uh, on the back so there's no up pull if you want. Or you can set it a bit forward but for me then, then you know like this. Forward like this. I, I don't like that sort of thing. I, I have to have my guitar tremolo like that. Parallel. And also another important aspect is how high you take the actual bridge itself by adjusting these two screws here and here. Now that has a direct bearing on, of course, on the string height that we just covered. So you want to make sure that it looks something like this on your guitar. And you shouldn't really be that far out because, you know, these designs are these designs. They're all pretty much the same. Whether I'm using different strings and things like that or different pickups, that's no relevance whatsoever. The only relevance here is the relationship of this to the actual neck itself and how it's fitted in the body. Now, if you've bought crap gear, <laughs> I'm telling you now, you're going to go round in circles. But if you bought what I bought or the quality that I bought from, say, Warmoth, uh, you, you'll see yourself uh, that it's a, a very simple matter to get that right. And, of course, you simply adjust everything on the back screws down there to balance things up, get it in tune. That sounds like a plan, and it's not that difficult to do. OK, I've got a tuner here. I've got the guitar tuned into E, A, D, G, B, E, which is standard guitar tuning, 440. Thanks very much. It should all work very nice. And indeed, on this guitar it does, because I've already done the work. But we're going to cover this anyway. So, if we strike an E, you can see, generally speaking, it, it's pretty much in tune. And the same with the others. Okay, maybe I'll put a little bit on there. Tiny little bit on there. So, you can see, it's pretty much in tune. Now, all you need to do, you can do one or two things in my experience, but other people might tell you a difference. I'm not the expert that they claim to be. <laughs> so take the E string and strike it and get your E and then just, you can either harmonic it at 12th fret, like that. And it should be the same on here. Or you can hold it down. It's pretty much the same. Now, it's the same because I've adjusted these uh, saddles backwards or forwards, depending on how that came out when I first did it. Let's just run through the rest. Oh. Pretty much. And the next one. Slightly higher. Let's just check its tuning. Yeah, it's so high. I'll adjust that later. Next one. Okay, the next one. Okay, it's slight, a little in it. Yeah. And the last one. You can see they're all pretty neat. I'll adjust that to that D a little bit. Now the thing is, you can see that D, let's let's use that as a as a test. Let's slide down a little bit. So there it is. Oh, it's slightly high anyway, so let me just adjust that to get it exactly right. Okay, there it is. So if I touch it now, yeah, it's nigh on. I on perfect. Slight, yeah, it's, it's as near as matters. Let's put it that way. So, now, if when we strike the string there and we come back up the top and do it there and it's flat on the ear, what you do is you take this saddle and move it towards this way. Right, so if it's flat, move it this way. And what that does is that makes the string a bit shorter and then you retune again. 
and that should pull it as you adjust this uh, until it corrects and you should end up just literally like that or you can oh, it's hard to do on camera there you go so you can harmonic it or you can play it at the 12th fret in my opinion some people will argue I don't really care Another thing I want to show you about these down here, which I might have talked about in uh, section one, but I'm going to talk about them again now and just put them on camera, just so we can get this out of the way. Now I hope you can see this. Just take a quick look, because you'll find that these three here have a sort of angle like this. And when we step back, usually these three here these, these three this side also have an angle like this but are usually either a little bit further in or a little bit further out or what have you but that's a rough guide uh, right there uh, to understand how it should be roughly when you do your job particularly if you've got a standard nut on the guitar now I'm going to whip along to the nut and we'll just cover this just before we uh, finish this little section now then, you should be able to see this from where you are. I covered it in uh, video one, but I'm going to cover it in video two as well, because it's part of the understanding of the setup. This nut isn't just, no, not this nut here, the, the nut on the guitar. This nut here isn't uh, purely a, a run-of-the-mill nut. If you look carefully, you can see that various little bits have been cut back. You can see them, they're like little grooves on the camera, I can see them from here. Uh, and they are like compensation for uh, intonation and things like that. But they do have an effect, they're going to have an effect, if you think about it, it's pretty obvious, on where those saddles are at the other end. It's absolutely clear that these little grooves have an effect on where the saddles are placed at the other end when the intonation is correct. If you think about it, you go and think about it for a while. And that will be the uh, the case, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is called uh, an Eavana nut, and it, it's designed to compensate for these outer tune things when you're playing chords and stuff like that. You know, that's all that sort of rubbish. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the setup, the quick run through of setup, because I'm not going to spend all day. The video's down below on this one where you can go and have a look, not on uh, video one of this guitar, but on one of the other videos I've done which explains different things in different places so it keeps this one a little bit shorter but not much shorter so that my friends is the uh, setup of the guitar and uh, it's a pretty cool setup we're going to go back up top now and uh, have a bit of a discussion about the guitar itself and, and I've got a little test for you to do if you didn't watch all of part one or you skip through it there's a lot of people do because they're long videos Great if you're making the guitar, as you could, but not so great if you want to just get the, you know, the the uh, the roots of the thing. Anyway, in any case, uh, yeah, we're going to do this little test, and I want you to put down below on this video how long your test lasted compared to how long my test lasts on camera. And trust me, I won't be lying. <laughs> Some people can, and no doubt they will when they go down below. Well, I'm back. That wasn't too bad, was it? I wouldn't call it rocket science to set the thing up. I don't know about you. However, here it is. It's all finished. Well, nearly. The singular thing I've got to do is to put these uh, strap locks in. One there and one up there. And we're in business. Now, you also notice I did put this golden knob on the end here which really sets it off I think, I think uh, the actual uh, view of the guitar yeah let's see if I can get this any nicer it's hard on the camera that's it and you can see the really sort of works really well hence the name golden brown yeah but look at the back we've got all this stuff on the back now I didn't put a plate on there because uh, I don't think it needs it. I think it looks, it's nicer looking. Uh, let's get them off. Solder bits. You do get that sometimes. Just, you can scrape them off almost. 
that's it, it's done. Put the back plate on, got the neck plate done, done everything else, got all these on, everything balanced, as you saw, and uh, what more can you say? It's awesome. Now we did talk in the earlier video, uh, part one, maybe earlier in this one, who knows, <laughs> you get lost, in that long you get lost, about the resonance of the guitar. And I relate the resonance of this guitar down to uh, the roasted alder and the roasted uh, maple. Excuse me. Yeah, because they're roasted, they're drier. They're much drier than the wood would be if you used it just regularly. So, what I want you to do, in case I didn't ask you, and even if I did and you didn't post it, go and do it and post it. Take your regular guitar, hold it like this, keep your fingers off the strings, if you can see that, and just do this. And count three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven seconds. What you get is a 27 second vibration through the neck. It would really be cool to have your count from your guitar down there. Preferably if it's a bolt on neck, because that might make a difference and things like that. If they're Stratocasters, great, why not try it? It'd be really cool, as I said, to, to check how long yours vibrates for? Just as I showed you, just one strike, don't go mad, and just feel the resonance. And then we'll do a comparison maybe, uh, or maybe I'll even do another video just talking about that, because I think it's a very, very important aspect of building the guitar, uh, which I haven't heard or seen anybody talk about in this way. When I first built this guitar, it was one of the first things that I noticed when I picked it up and played the first chord. It just carried on, 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 and on. A bit like me. <laughs> so don't forget to check that, will you? The resonance of the guitar. We'll do a little video later about that. I can feel it in my bones, man. Well, I can't when I've been drinking this stuff. <laughs> anyway, let's move on and uh, have a little summing up about where we're at, what it's cost, was it worth it, is it this, can it be that, you know the idea. Well, what did it cost? The overall cost of making something as awesome as this guitar is, and as you will see later on when it gets played and you hear it yourself, uh, you'll realise that it's a little bit different than your average guitar. I can tell you, but you've got to bear in mind that the cost in England isn't the cost if you lived in America, for example. Here in England, uh, we have to pay shipping and it cost about, I think it was about $90 to ship the body and about $70 to ship the neck. So that's already $150 or $160 in shipping. But there's more. The other nasty bit is the tax in England. The tax in England is 20%. So the figures I'm giving you include the 20% and include the shipping. So we might knock some of that off a little bit later. Everything, everything on this guitar included cost about uh, £1,700, £1,700. Now in real money, that's about $2,200. But you've got to understand, there's 20% of that $2,200 got to come off. And there's also that shipping of $160, let's say $160. So what you're going to really find is the real cost 
if I was in America, is probably about $1,700. And I think you'll probably agree that for $1,700, man, there's absolutely no way that you could make a good, well, that you could buy a guitar like that off the shelf, so to speak. You certainly wouldn't get one from Fender for that sort of money. And bear in mind, it's all Fender authorised, you know, components, well, where they can be, uh, which is a good thing. So it sort of makes it like a Fender, doesn't it? <clears throat> so $1,700 takes me down to about uh, £1,300. Now listen, <laughs> £1,300 is ridiculously cheap for a product that ends up like that. So is it worth it? Well, as I said, I've heard it and played it and all the rest. I would say it really is worth it. And the reason it's worth it is it's probably as good a sounding Strat or Strat type of guitar that I've got, that I've ever played. It will sustain longer than most of the guitars I've got. Why? I put it down to what I've said. But there's more to it, you know, it's more than the sum of the parts, if you will. You know, the sum of the parts is just a guitar. But the sum of the parts on this one, the build was so easy to do because of the components these two components came from the same place, which is Warmoth. The pickups went in first time. So how would I score it? How would I rate this thing? Well, <clears throat> it's got to be a 10 out of 10. It just has to be a 10 out of 10. I don't know of a guitar like this anywhere. I couldn't have gone and bought one. I couldn't. I, may, I could have maybe got a luthier to make one. Which is a different story. Now there's nothing wrong with Luthiers making them. But what I like about this guitar is I assembled it, I'll call it that. I know exactly how it's been put together. I know exactly the result. And for me, it's as good as it gets. Not just in the build, I'm very picky with builds, but in everything about it. Uh, it's the perfect strat, if you will. For my style of playing, may not be for yours, of course. You might like uh, country and western stuff. Now, I'm not saying these pickups can't do that, but I can't play. I can't play country and western. And you know what? I don't want to. I want to play what I want to play on it. So your strat, if you make one, should be the same. It should be perfect for you, not for me. So when you go down there with your nasty comments, some of you chicken pickers. <laughs> No, that's a KFC, isn't it? Yeah, when you go down there and you say, oh, this guitar sounds crap. Well, number one, that's a subjective thing. And number two, this guitar is made for me, not for you. It, it's really important to understand that. And then have a go at making your own. See, if, see how near to this one you can get. Some guys do great jobs. If you're just learning, you wouldn't start off on one of these. Choose the cheap bodies and cheap necks from Warmoth. They still fit exactly the same. Might have a bit more work. Now we're going to go out there and crank it up. But we are going to play it very clean as well. You know, it's one of them things that a lot of Strat guys will come on and just say, Oh, does it quack? Well, I don't think it quacks. I don't play that style of music. Well, that's okay. I'm going to try and make it quack. If, if, I do, if it doesn't quack, don't worry. I can't do it. <laughs> but... Uh, You'll enjoy it. You'll, you, you'll like what comes out, I guess. I'm pretty sure you will. Uh, I haven't met anyone who said, oh, that sounds bad. Uh, that's actually here and not in the, the video. So, uh, yeah, one more thing you've got to do. You got you can visit www.tonymackenzie.com. I haven't updated it for some time. I keep saying I will. I must get to it. We'll go from there. This is the 253rd video I've made on YouTube. 253. It's hundreds and hundreds of hours, honestly. And you know what? It's the last guitar I'm ever going to make. I've had enough of making guitars. After a while, you can look at this one here. And to be honest, I could if I was so inclined make hundreds of them.
But I don't do that. I don't sell what I make. It's for me. I bought and made, bought the components and made the guitar for me. So nothing's for sale. And I've got enough guitars. Can you ever have enough? Some people say, oh, you can't ever have enough. Tell me, you've gone nuts. You're flipping out. Well, unfortunately, it's about 20 odd guitars. Trust me, I've got enough. So I, I won't be making any more videos of guitars. It's a multitude of reasons, some of which I don't like some of the people on YouTube. They get on you, Pip. I don't have to do this stuff, so you know what? I won't do it. <laughs> but I will continue to uh, make videos as I feel, as I feel I should. Review videos of equipment. If I'm in the mood for it. If I'm not in the mood for it, well, we won't get made. 253 videos, trust me, cost a fortune. I have no intention whatsoever of spending the same amount of money again. On YouTube, you couldn't give a monkeys about what I do and where I am. They don't care about anything except, well, they care about one thing. But you can figure that out. Well, maybe two, if you count data. Hey, I'm not sure whether I actually showed you the strap. Yeah, what do you think? Green and brown, like trees. <laughs> oh, that was a good idea. I've got them uh, real shower strap locks. Yeah, but the strap, it's a, it's a Dunlop strap. And the last time I saw a design like that, it was over, over Jimi Hendrix's shoulder in 1968. So I bought this one from the shop that was closing down Music Store Pro here in uh, England, just down the road. It's a pity they've been there for 25, 30 years. They say they're opening again, so maybe they will, maybe they won't. My personal view is they probably, no, I don't think they will. They might, no, probably not. In any case, my best wishes to the guys that work there. I've known you all a long time and I uh, hope you get sorted, guys. Okay, on to the plane. Whoa! <laughs> it's going to come up any second now. Uh, you, you know what I play like. I mean, sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm bad. Who knows what I'll be like on this. But I'm going to put it through the uh, Mesa Barbara amp. So you hear this level of guitar through an absolutely incredible amplifier. So I don't think you probably ever get a better tone. Uh, but tone's subjective, you know. To me, it sounds pretty awesome, and it, that sustain goes on forever. You just have to watch it, it's that good. Uh, so, I hope you've enjoyed the whole series of these two videos, if you've watched them both. And if you're making one, great, come back and post down there and let me know, uh, let me know what yours came out like. And by the way, while we're talking of posts down there, uh, there's links to different sections of another video where I, I, I'm assemble one of these guitars where it shows you different aspects of the build you know things closer up like flatting the, the neck and you know you get the idea uh yeah so yeah it should all be good that's it what more can i say until next time have a great one guys and i really hope you like the guitar playing and the tones of it and the, all the other things that this guitar really is. If you could see it in real life, trust me, it's awesome. Till next time, get out of here. Well, I'm back. <laughs> it looks like I never went anywhere. Just two seconds ago, I was building the thing. Well, I want to show you the guitar basically uh, clean, yeah, some people say, oh, you, you don't show it clean, so I'm going to show it clean first, using this amp, of course, <laughs> and uh, you'll have an idea of that, I'll play around a bit, I don't know about this quack stuff, because I never really did get that, I can't do that, so remember it's built for me, not, not for you, right, well here we go.
You'll notice just even from one chord, there's very little in this way of, uh, you know, where you get the, the resonance. Because it's slightly out of tune and things like that. It all seems to be perfect. <laughs> out and you'll hear how choppy it goes but you know what are guys like that it's a strat isn't it We got the treble drop back to four, the middle up to six, bass on five, and the presence on just about two because this amp can be choppy if you want it to be. I like it as it is somehow, it's sort of nice. The middle pickle, clean, very nice tone. So if you haven't got huge amounts of water men, don't worry about that. That's just the way it's set up for the sort of Hendrixy. <laughs> Trust me, the notes will go on for a very long time. In fact, it's more resonant than any guitar I've got. Believe that or not, any guitar, which uh, says something, and we'll be making a video about that uh, after this one. Show a bit of that sort of neck stuff, you know. <laughs> but he's still got that strat tone, it's real cool. So what we're going to do next is uh, go through them again on crunch and then we'll play a track at the end uh, that uh, sort of suits my style, may not suit yours but rock and roll. Okay well we're on the crunch, crunchy. We'll work on this uh, clean tone and then I'll pull this out again so you get a little bit of a an idea about that. Uh, it's sort of crunchy. Okay, let's 
let's uh, flip this out so we get this in uh, true strap tone, or they say. So I'm going to just move across, doing my thing, you've heard that one. We're on the, these two now, yeah. to these two pickups. sound there, right there, but of course it's probably not as great as this one. bit of sort of rather than just uh, in front of a camera doing nothing, you know. You need the tones done. The wah. Yeah. <laughs> 